Good morning. It's Possum Friday. Um, glad you could join us. It's been kind of a slow week. Um, I've had a lot of work to do, but unfortunately I've done a little bit of all of it instead of one piece of any of it. I do that sometimes. So at this point I've got like five knives that are all at various stages of completion. I need to, I need to finish one of them today. So that's my goal for today. The new steel is here, so we're working on that, and it is absolutely fabulous. Um, I wish you could hold this in your hand and just feel its weight and uh, look at the quality and the grain of the steel, the way it cuts, uh, the way it feels, the way it grinds. It's just beautiful. I'm really having a lot of fun working with it. So, <clears throat> today, uh, this week's show, we've got a little bit of a single segment show it seems. Uh, it's me earlier in the week ranting about property taxes and how they impact homesteaders and small craftsmen and self-employed. I initially had thought later as the situation changed I'm just gonna delete this segment it's really not useful but upon re-watching I thought well yeah it is. Um, you know I always struggle about when I'm in a lack of faith moment about actually recording that and putting that out there but I, I think it's useful I, I, I don't want to give the impression that I always just travel along at 100% faith and I never worry and I never fear and I never get frustrated because that's not that's not, not the case and, and if you're following along um, and you're getting that false impression, well, then I, I'm afraid that when you get frustrated or, or irritated or, or just run out of options, that you're going to feel that the problem lies with you. No, I think everybody goes through this, and it's, it's pretty normal. But the situation has resolved itself, at least for this year. Um, I owed $754 in property taxes um, for this year. And the Lord has provided we are getting a refund check for some equipment that we bought last year. And it's going to come out to $900. So that's going to pay our property taxes and put a little extra cash in our pocket. I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Thank you, Lord. Um, he will provide. And he has always provided. And I need to not forget that. But this week's show is sort of along a singular topic. I hope you enjoy it. And all these scattered projects in my workshop, I'm going to get back to work. God bless and enjoy the show. Hey there. Um, you're not catching me in the middle of a break right now. Not going to be too many breaks in the future. Just got back from the county courthouse talking to the tax appraiser about our property taxes for the year. And the basic breakdown is that the next 30 knives I sell are going to go to the county for the privilege of living here. Where I don't have police protection, don't have fire protection, uh, my kids don't use the schools, and I live on a deteriorating, broken down road. So what am I paying for? I don't know, a uh, bunch of fat bureaucrats, I guess, just sitting in an air-conditioned office all day. So this brings me to a point I've been wanting to address. The taxes and fees and different functions that the government collects from you and how it impacts you as a homesteader. So. I used to see all the time on forums and whatnot that the president had signed this executive order or that executive order which would allow the government to round us all up 
and put us into work camps, detention centers, some sort of thing where we would be forced into uh, a, a situation where we had to work for the state. Well, I don't see why they would ever do that. First off, we're in the most effective work camp that the government has ever devised. Right now, take a look at your income. You've got property taxes, which constitute, well, my property taxes this year on a very simple and humble homestead. They're saying that my property taxes are going to constitute 124 hours of my labor priced at minimum wage. Uh, of that minimum wage, the government's probably going to take 10 to 20 percent. So then, because I have to have a vehicle to get me to that minimum wage job, I have to pay tax titles, fees, etc. When you add everything together, we're probably at something in excess of a 30% tax rate. You're in the work camp, guys. You're already there. You're already chopping cotton on Uncle Sam's plantation. What's to be done about it? Uh, you can't live much more simply than we're doing now. Uh, we live in a house with only very basic amenities at all. Uh, it's shelter. It's a plywood shack, but it's shelter. And we provide our, most of our own food. We provide our own water. We provide our own electricity. All the materials and everything else. Taxes I already paid. I paid taxes on all of those items when I purchased them. Yet the government now still says, because I've accumulated this pile of goods here, in which I call it a home and I live in it, um, I have to be taxed every year, um, forever. So there are things you can do to reduce your taxes. Agricultural exemptions are one thing, and that that helps somewhat, but there are some concerns with the government knowing exactly what you're doing on your property. Anytime you go to the government asking for a handout, there is a problem and a risk. There, in some states, offer a homestead exemption, which lowers your property taxes even more. Again, the government doesn't want you homesteading. So, what do you really? You're are you you're asking them for money in return for homesteading? I bet there's a big sharp hook in that free worm that they're giving you and dangling in front of you. So, there's going to have to be aspects by which you lower your tax burden. Lighter's dead. I guess I'll just hold this as a prop piece now. The, um, probably shouldn't be discussing this topic today when I am angry and frustrated with it. If you ask me a week from now how I feel about property taxes, I will probably just shrug and say, the Lord will provide. And I'm certain that he will. But right now, when when you first get this dropped in your lap, you kind of stare at this big burden and go, what the heck? How am I supposed to live? Well, if you believe that God has commanded you to live simply and humbly in a homesteading, agrarian-style life, Clearly, God will provide. He's not going to put you in a situation uh, and cause you to want and desire something that can never be fulfilled. That is uh, not God's way. So, I don't have any doubt that God will provide. I'm just right now, it's uh, looking like a big old elephant in front of me. Here goes our neighbor's trash truck. So, what we do is we try to find avenues of things that we can do or sell to make money to pay those burdens, the increasing burdens of the state. And we try to expand our financial situation ahead of the government's creeping grasp. That's not always possible. We saw uh, this week with the bankruptcy of Detroit that there's not particularly a way to always stay ahead of it. Now, you can't just declare bankruptcy and still continue to live on your homestead. There's only, in the state of Texas, there's a homesteading law, 
and they can't. No one can sue you and take away your property. You can't lose your home that way. But the state maintains the freedom to take away your property, either because they desire it via eminent domain, or because they've decided they can no longer shear you every year for your property taxes. The sheep that doesn't let allow itself to be sheared gets eaten. Ah, much better. Fix my lighter. So, the the goal is to provide enough income off of your homestead to stay ahead of the government's property taxes. Property taxes just grow. They they. I, I don't know anybody anywhere who's ever said that the property taxes went down. Um, if yours went down at any point in your history. Uh, and your house didn't burn down, I think that you've come out ahead. Probably you should email me and let me know what county you live in so I can move there myself. The property taxes always go up, and that's primarily because counties, any government, federal, state, local, county, city, they all governments view their citizens as a source of revenue. They, they even blatantly call it revenue. They, they Taxes, fees, permits, they refer to it as revenue generation. As far as I'm concerned, the, the veil has slipped and they're showing the truth of government. And you, you ha it's a situation we have to accept. We can't get around it. Every year or two, a, you'll hear in the news where some member of the sovereign citizen in uh, movement was shot and killed by police because he didn't believe that he needed a driver's license or some other permit from the state in order to freely travel. Now while I can sympathize with what they're saying, um, the truth of the matter is, is that we are slaves. We are slaves to a draconian system that it's really not of our making. Um, nobody alive today created this. You may have helped further it along as I have. Uh, you didn't create it. And by the time we were born, I don't care if you're 80 years old or 40 years old or 20 years old, by the time you were born, this system already existed and had gained enough momentum that it can't be stopped. You can't starve the beast. The beast creates its own food. And if you try to starve the beast, it will eat you. It will eat you up. So your best line of defense is money. It's revenue. Uh, my model is that we feed ourselves from our farm and we do crafts in order to provide additional income. I'm a craftsman. This may mean that I have to go to town and get a small job, you know, for 125 hours just to pay my property taxes every year. If so, that's that's a small price to pay. That's three weeks of work to provide for the rest of the year uh, living here. And that's an acceptable amount of slavery, I guess. Um, it's unavoidable. But what happens next year? Now it's uh, 140 hours the next year, 180 hours the, the year after that, 220 hours after that. It just continues to creep up, and what are we to do? There is no place that you can live for free. There are no homesteads where you don't ever have to pay property taxes. If there are, I'm not aware of them. I think every country in the world views its citizens as a source of income, and they're going to extract it from you. So we all need a source of revenue. You cannot live so simply that you don't have to pay something. Either you're going to have to pay or somebody else is going to have to pay on your behalf. It's just the way it is. Labor is a basic economic unit and let's say I make 30 knives and I set those knives aside and say this is the government's knives. These 30 knives which constitute you know 90 to 100 hours of my labor that's the government's labor. That's the government's knives. Um, I, I can't, at the end of the year, take in 30 knives, put them on, drop them on the 
counter and say, here you go, big government, here's your knives. No, they're not going to accept that. Um, any more than they would accept, you know, here's 10, 10 gallons of honey. Here's 150 cartons of eggs. Uh, they, they won't accept those things. Here's your three cows, your steers. Here's your five hogs. Here's your 180 chickens. They No, they want money. They want cash. Cash or visa. <laughs> the system is not set up so that you can easily sell your wares and get money. The government won't take your wares anymore. Um, right now, the only way to easily exchange that economic unit of labor is via a corporation. And the corporation doesn't want all of your labor. They want a portion, but they want the best portion. They want to take the best portion for themselves. That's the nine to five portion. That's your best waking hours. And they're not going to allow you to give them just a part of your mind, a part of your life, a part of your labor. They want it all. Even if they want you part-time, they want you part-time when they demand it. They'll write you a schedule and say, be here at this time if you wish to continue being paid. And this is problematic for a homesteader. They don't really care. You know, I was up all night. Uh, I had a, a, a you who was delivering a lamb and she was having trouble and I spent all night pulling that lamb and making sure it stayed alive so we'd you know, have another lamb or we'd have something to eat. No, the corporations don't care about that. They say, hey, we pay you so you can buy something to eat. That's the way the system's set up. It's yet another barrier to homesteading. And it's one that we can break down given time, um, but our society is not geared towards homesteading. I, you may remember from an earlier show I explained to you that the government doesn't want you living simply. They want you living expensively. They want you to be high maintenance because the more dollars that change hands in your lifestyle, the more they get a piece of it. And if you want to live simply, well, you're trying to, A, make sure fewer of those dollars change hands, and B, make sure that they get less of a piece of it, so more of it stays in your pocket. It's, it's a constant battle. But, just as uh, when the disciples were charged with not paying the temple tax, Jesus gave them a, an example of why the father should charge the son to live in his house. And then he told them, go over there to that fish. And they opened up the fish's mouth, and in it was a coin with which they were able to pay the temple tax. And property taxes are our temple tax. This homestead, this property, is where we give praise unto God. In many ways, this is where we live. We raise our children as Christians. Uh, we work as Christians. We we live a craftsman's life style. We work simply with our hands, the way God has instructed us. It's our temple. And property taxes are the temple tax. We have to pay it. One way or the other. So, Jesus will provide. <laughs> Well, episode 7 is in the can. Hope you enjoyed it. So, I want to alert you guys to something we have new in the knife shop. Um, we're having a design your own knife contest. So, the way this essentially works is you can design your own knife uh, for a specific purpose, kitchen, farm, you know, defense, whatever. And then email me a drawing or a picture or some description of your design and on August 1st I'm going to have a random drawing which I'm going to pick one of these designs and then I'm going to make it and what the winner will get was, is that they will get their knife free and I'm also going to after that sell that knife in the shop as a made to order item and I'm going to name it after that person this is how Jim Bowie got started, right? He uh, he had a specific purpose for a knife that he wanted, and he went to a knife maker and had him make it, and his knife got famous. So this is your chance to have a famous knife named after you. <laughs> anyway, go check us out on Facebook, and hope you uh, 
enjoy the contest. Good luck. Remember, guys, God's going to provide for all your needs. You're doing his will. He's not going to let you starve. He's not going to let the government take your property. He's going to protect you and, and shelter you. So, hope you enjoyed the show. Keep up with us on Facebook. Visit us in the knife shop. And send the, keep them custom orders coming. God bless. Y'all keep on being y'all.